Question 35. Is. Is there a difference between spirit guides and guardian angels, and is there an angelic kingdom? In the way that most people look at things there is a difference between those we generally call spirit guides and guardian angels, and the angelic kingdom truly does exist. However, if we look at things slightly differently, it becomes clear to us that all spirit life, whether we think of it as human, or as extraterrestrial, or as angelic, are all aspects of the same one spirit life. Bearing the above in mind, I will proceed with the differences as we generally observe these. In other words, as two different lines of evolution, which is how the spirit guide White Eagle refers to the human and the angelic. Those we refer to as our spirit guides have often experienced many human lifetimes upon the earth plane. Furthermore, in most cases, they have sufficiently evolved to reside upon a level of spirit life occupied by those who no longer have any necessity to return to earth life through incarnation. Although those from this level can return to earth if they choose to do so, and some do return, usually to fulfill some sort of mission or, for instance, to assist someone from their soul group who is less advanced than themselves. We can have many spirit friends who endeavor to guide or help us in some way during our time on earth. Although some of these spirit friends are quite often referred to as spirit helpers rather than guides. This is to differentiate between those who perhaps for a limited period will do their best to help or influence or inspire us in some way, and our main, specific or chief spirit guide who will oversee our entire lifetime upon earth. Spirit helpers or our main guide do try to help us, and all the more so during our more testing or challenging times. So during a stressful time they may, for instance, successfully influence our mood by bringing to us a sudden and unexpected feeling of peace and calm. Or they may find a way to uplift us when we are feeling less than happy or sad. They may also be able to transfer an impression or fresh idea to us. I'm sure that many people can relate to times when for no apparent reason their mood suddenly changed for the better, as though a cloud had just been lifted from them. These things cannot be totally proved, but nonetheless it is true. In a sense, the negative potential of thought impressions can be more readily accepted by many people. It is a well-known fact that negative or depressive people can bring down those people they come into contact with. This is a good reason to avoid such people unless we are able to help them change their views. If we can accept this fact concerning the negative possibilities, it should be clear that those from the spirit side of life can, quite often, bring their thoughts and higher vibrations to us and that these can brighten our day. Another way our spirit guide or a spirit helper may help us is in a creative sense. We need only look at the many novelists comedy and song writers, and many others, who talk of how ideas just pop into their minds. We may also receive or tap into inspiration while we sleep, or have an idea as we wake. Some scientists have reported answers to mathematical equations they struggled with when awake coming to them as they slept. Each of us, throughout our entire life, may receive spirit help to some degree. Although this often seems so natural to us that few people will ever recognize that they have received any help of this kind. I do not wish to give the impression that everything can be plain sailing and that advantageous spirit influence can always be made available to us. There are certainly occasions when our spirit friends cannot help us. In most cases, for instance, we came to earth after first agreeing a pre-birth life plan, and if this was to experience things that are less than enjoyable to us when we are here, but will nonetheless help to teach us something that in the fullness of time our soul will appreciate, our spirit friends will not interfere in any way with this. On these occasions our spirit friends will stand back and simply observe, awaiting the outcome. Obviously, they understand that however much they may wish that they could help us, they realize that some experiences are necessary for our pre-birth life plan to be fulfilled. 
We also have our own free will, and although our spirit guide or a spirit helper may succeed in directing an idea to formulate in our mind, whether we choose to follow or reject the idea is our own decision. Regardless of whether we make good decisions or not our spirit friends will continue trying to help and guide us towards our soul objectives. I'm sure for some spirit guides it is a rewarding task. While for others it must be very frustrating to say the least, especially when so many people upon earth get negatively entrenched in materialistic pursuits that I'm sure take them far away from their pre-birth life plan. It is just as well that we have eternity in which to progress. Moving on to the elevated spirit being we call the guardian angel. It is my understanding that we all have one who watches over us from the very moment of our conception. We are also told that they will remain with us until after our physical passing. Like guides, guardian angels do try to help our spiritual growth. In addition to the guardian angel there are also many other angels who help us and creation in all manner of ways. These include angels who direct healing energies when spiritual healing is practiced, or whenever healing prayers reach them. Although many spirit people who have and may again incarnate on earth may also help with this form of healing. My former partner was sometimes able to see angels and spirit guides while in an altered state of consciousness during healing sessions with me. She reported seeing angels with an appearance of pure white light. One could describe them as pure energy beings, too bright to be viewed in the same way in which during these sessions she was able to see spirit guides. We have been informed by numerous spirit guides and teachers that under the direction of the angels, and part of the angelic kingdom, there are many lines of creation. There are nature spirits, such as fairies and gnomes. There are also elemental spirits, and these exist within such as minerals, stones and crystals. All of creation has life, and is assisted by life, in forms that are almost beyond our imagination and comprehension in their complexity and numbers. Every single flower, plant and tree we are told is attended by nature spirits who take to them vital life force energy, without which they would cease to grow and develop. The very color and scent of a flower is said to be there only because of the work of nature spirits. I can testify that once, while attending a course that included the equivalent to aura photography on video, I witnessed a film that only a few moments before had been taken in an adjoining room, and this showed an elemental spirit moving on the outside of a crystal that was being held in the upturned palm of a lady being filmed. In appearance the elemental spirit resembled a figure like the advertising image used for the film Ghostbusters. After a short while the elemental figure appeared to suddenly realize that they were being filmed, or observed, and immediately they seemed to shoot straight back into the crystal. Under the same conditions as I mentioned earlier, my former partner, who is still a friend, by the way, also saw nature spirits and we even had three-way conversations with some of them. They appeared to her like beautiful little girls about four inches tall, and we managed to communicate with three of them. The first and most communicative is called Lisa, who has long blonde hair, and who, while working on the earth, is situated in Ireland, and specializes in bluebells and snowdrops. Then there is Claire, who has dark black or brown hair, while the third, called Emma, has black hair, and was seen wearing a green dress and a hat made from a buttercup, she reported working with the green things of nature. A pixie, who Lisa told us works on the earth with potatoes, was also seen on more than one occasion. Nature spirits I understand to desire nothing more than to be of service and to work in harmony with us and all in creation. If we were to cooperate with the nature spirits, by asking for their help through prayer, for instance, and by growing crops without artificial or chemical fertilizers and pesticides, which the nature spirits dislike, our crop yields could turn out larger and far healthier. Of course, gardeners, and particularly those who grow organic fruit or vegetables, 
are very often already working in harmony with nature spirits, even if they are not consciously aware of doing so. We are also reliably informed by our spirit friends that there are nature spirits that exist in the four elements of earth, air, fire, and water. Each of these we are told is serving and working with purpose, to sustain and develop life. I further understand that most nature spirits can change size at will, and will do so depending upon the task at hand. People clairvoyantly developed can potentially see nature or elemental spirits, although like all spirit life they vibrate at a rate that is too fast to be seen by the physical eye. Higher in vibration and spirit progress on the angelic side of life there are those termed, archangels. Like humans, those on the angelic side are climbing the evolutionary ladder to higher levels of expression. It truly is a wondrous universe in which we live. Because the angelic kingdom is a subject of particular interest to many readers, in addition to what I have already said, I have selected some passages from two books that I think readers may find of interest. The first is from, The Kingdom of the Gods by Geoffrey Hodson, which gives many descriptions of angels and nature spirits, as witnessed through the author's personal clairvoyant vision. To avoid confusion it will help readers to know that Geoffrey Hodson referred to many higher angels as gods. Paraphrased here and there, he says, on the lower rungs of the angelic ladder of life are the lesser nature spirits, brownies and gnomes, associated with the element of earth, fairies and sylphs with that of air, undines or nereids, in Greek mythology, nereids are sea nymphs, with water, and salamanders with fire. Above them, are angels and archangels in an ascending scale of evolutionary stature, reaching up to the seven mighty spirits before the throne. Countless in their numbers, innumerable in their orders and degrees, the gods dwell in the super-physical worlds, each order performing its particular task, each possessing specific powers and each presenting a characteristic appearance. The whole constitutes a race of evolving beings at present pursuing an evolutionary pathway which is parallel to that of man, and which with him uses this planet and solar system as a field of activity and unfoldment. In his book, Geoffrey Hodson, who, by the detailed accounts and descriptions of angels he gives, must have been a highly gifted medium, with excellent clairvoyant ability, mentions a number of angels with a whole range of responsibilities, from caring for a single tree, a mountain, or a large geographical area, to an entire country. While the hierarchy of angelic development, the archangels and planetary angels, care for whole planets, and even higher angels care for the entire solar system, as the following mentions. On a single planet such as our Earth, solar archangels and angels are represented by corresponding planetary gods. In addition to these major creative intelligences, there are the angels presiding over divisions and areas of the surface of the earth. They are called landscape angels and are partly concerned with creative and evolutionary processes in the mineral and plant kingdoms of nature. A mountain is a living, evolving organism, a body, as indeed is the whole earth, in which the three aspects of the logos are incarnate. At least three processes are occurring within and about every mountain, the creation and evolution by the action of the divine will thought of atoms, molecules and crystals of which the mountain is built, the vivification of substance and form by the indwelling divine life and the awakening and development of the incarnate mineral consciousness. In each of these, Nature is assisted by hosts of nature spirits and gods working under the direction of a responsible official, who is the mountain god. When a peak is part of a range, the whole range in its turn will be presided over by a far more highly evolved being of the same order as the gods of single peaks. To corroborate to some degree the information so far given, I have selected some teachings from the spirit guide White Eagle. He was the spirit guide of Grace Cook, and many of his teachings have been published in book form. 
I have paraphrased from Spiritual Unfoldment 2, subtitled, The Ministry of Angels and the Invisible World of Nature, where White Eagle is talking of when we are able to raise our consciousness to perceive other life forms, he says. You will become aware of the life within the nature kingdom, of streams of life parallel with the human line of evolution, and working with it, of fairies, as you call them, existing not only in children's picture books, but real, and having their own purpose in the scheme of evolution. They are busy carrying the life forces to feed the plants and the trees. If your eyes were opened, you would see some of them in merry, rushing, tumbling, rippling, falling water, these are shining water sprites, you would see sylphs or air spirits on the wing, or in the fire you would see the spirits of the fire, the salamanders. Evolution does not simply concern itself with human life, as I have mentioned, nature spirits too can progress, as the following from the same book teaches. Some of these nature spirits will eventually evolve to the angelic plane, and follow a parallel line of evolution to the human. As the human will eventually become divine, in essence we are of course already divine, what White Eagle means is that we will become divine in our nature, so certain nature spirits evolve from gnomes, fairies and sprites to become angelic forms. In the angelic form they play a great part in human life. You are apt to confuse the human spirit with the spirit of the angel. Make no mistake. The angels come through a different line of evolution from that followed by humankind, although it is parallel to the human line, and the angels are closely linked with man and help in his work and life on earth. Man has always walked the earth with angels, the human race, whether it knows it or not, lives through all time under the guardianship of God's angels. It may strengthen and comfort you to know that not one of you treads the path of life alone, for from the moment of birth until physical death, you are guarded by an angel appointed for that task. The final passage I have selected from the same White Eagle book touches upon the same vast complexity and grandeur of the evolutionary plan as the final passage quoted from the Geoffrey Hodson book, and could somewhat justify his term of gods for highly evolved angels. It says, Angel beings came to earth from Venus to assist in the beginning of this earth planet, and in the creation of the form life on this earth. As time passed there came also to the earth those human beings who, having reached a certain stage on the path of evolution on another planet, were more advanced than souls than incarnating on earth. These more evolved souls assisted the younger ones on earth. Thus there came the two types of beings concerned with the creation of the earth life. There were the angels or the great planetary beings, who may be referred to as gods, and those advanced in human evolution, god-men. We have many times referred to the three, who have always been since the beginning, who are concerned purely with this solar system and the evolution of the earth planet, and who are best understood as the three aspects, wisdom, love, and power. These are the three from whom all life comes, the three first or major rays of life. On one of these three rays comes the angelic line of service, concerned with life form throughout every kingdom. Both books I have quoted from go into far more detail than I could possibly accommodate into this answer, but suffice it to say, we are not alone in our evolution, and it is far grander than we could ever imagine.